This bag of white magic powder is the secret to getting you to hike harder and faster while backpacking in the Grand Canyon. <laughs> Just kidding guys, that's not what this is at all, but I will share with you what this is and why it is absolutely essential to carry with you while backpacking in the GC. Now, the first thing you need to know about the Grand Canyon is it's really not about what style of backpacker you are. It is a lot about packing for the environment that you're in. So I don't care if you're ultra lightweight or not, it doesn't matter to me at all. I fall somewhere in the middle of that category, often bringing things that are heavier for safety reasons, as well as a little bit of added comfort, because let me tell you, this is an extremely rugged place to backpack. First of all, there are two main types of backpacking inside the Grand Canyon. Number one is the Rim to Rim Corridor. That's North Kaibab, South Kaibab, and Bright Angel Trails. This area has a ton of infrastructure. I'm talking luxurious campsites, with things like toilets and picnic tables, as well as a potable water line that runs through the canyon. Having all these things means you don't necessarily need everything I'm gonna talk about today. So if you don't need it for the corridor hikes, I'm gonna let you know. The first thing you absolutely need to backpack in the Grand Canyon is your permit. See the show notes for more details on permits. Next up, let's talk tech. So first of all, I have a Garmin InReach Mini, and I highly, highly recommend you having some type of emergency communication device in the big ditch. But here are two things you need to know. Number one, GPS, doesn't matter what you're using, is going to be wrong in the Grand Canyon. The big exception to this is the Rim to Rim Corridor. However, there's just so much micro terrain throughout the Grand Canyon, cliffs, scrambling, narrow trails, ups and downs, all the nitty gritty stuff that it just doesn't get picked up on topo maps. So when you're planning your routes, be sure to add at least a few extra miles and 1200 feet of gain and loss to your itinerary. You know, is it takes a lot longer to send messages in the Grand Canyon. This is because you're obviously in the canyon where signals are bouncing off of cliffs and whatnot. Next important big thing to bring with you is a battery pack. I also have a used small baggie that has my cables in it. Let's talk about going to the bathroom. Unlike most desert locations, you do not need to wag bag your poop in the Grand Canyon, and that is truly amazing. Now, if you're along the Rim to Rim corridor or specific backcountry sites and not in an at-large camping area, chances are you're actually even gonna have a toilet. I've seen some pretty cool toilets in the Grand Canyon. For those trail days, you obviously wanna be bringing a poop kit and a trowel. So I love the Juice of Spades. It's just a great, super lightweight trowel, and I've had zero issue getting through the rocky soil here with it. You do have to pack out your toilet paper though. So if that's the case, be sure to bring a little baggie sprinkled with some baking soda in there if you don't mind the smell and you don't want to co-mingle trash. No, that's not what this mystery bag of white powder is. We will get to it though. Next up, peeing. So I love to use a pee funnel because I can stand while I pee and it just makes life a lot easier for me. However, if you are along the river, it is encouraged that you pee in the river which is totally against everything you may have learned about LNT. But the reasoning behind this is because if you pee on the sand and algae grows, that actually starts to make camps pretty gross. Next up is my emergency kit. If you wanna learn more about how to create a super lightweight emergency kit, see my video up here. And the one thing that I do add to this kit that's not in that video are a set of tweezers for the cactus. I've also got my knife and an awesome little tenacious tape backpacking repair kit. I highly recommend bringing some of that and your standard headlamp. Another luxury item I love to bring for the bathroom is a really lightweight bidet. Now this is a Kulo Clean and it will fit on any bottle. I just don't like to co-mingle my bottles with this and I like to stay fresh. What can I say? I'm a little bit bougie. This is definitely a luxury item. However, if you're on your period while you're backpacking, this is a godsend. Not to mention, it's really nice to just clean yourself after every evening. So that way you can get all the dust and dirt and grime out there and stop some of the chafe. Another very simple at home item that you may have lying around that is a must have in the Grand Canyon is a trash bag. Now, this one has been used many, 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 many times. And the reason why I bring a trash bag is because if I'm on a river camp, it's gonna be pretty sandy. And if I wanna lay my gear out, it's just nicer to have a surface that isn't covered in sand. If you're foregoing a tent, you can certainly use your ground cloth. However, I like to have a tent. So bringing a trash bag is an extra lightweight option for me. Another must have, hiking pole. Just trust me on this one. All of the trails that leave the rim are extremely steep for the first several miles and having poles is absolutely helpful when navigating steep sections of canyon. I add duct tape to mine 
for a little added supplies. This is my toiletry kit. You will notice how it has virtually nothing in it. I will talk about sun protection in a minute, but one big thing to have is SPF lip balm. And a quick, simple, fun hack for you for saving some weight is this is a toothbrush head for an electric toothbrush. That's a great way to save some space and weight. One of the coolest parts about backpacking in the Grand Canyon are all the awesome little day trips and side trips you can take. And this is both on and off corridor. So I find having something like this, which weighs about five ounces, just really collapsible, compact, easy, fits in your palm. This is an Osprey little day pack is great if you love to carry your backpacking bag around have at it but i don't and like i said i'm not really super into ultra lightweight and at five ounces i feel like this is a very easy add next up gators now there are different types of gators at a bare minimum you're going to want to have calf high socks it's just dusty even on the rim to rim corridor and if you're going over sand or other things the fine micro dust gets into your shoes and grinds away at your feet causing you to have some pretty serious foot problems. These gaiters eliminate a lot of that. I'm not particularly partial to these. They're kind of falling apart, but an ankle gaiter is a really great idea. If you're going to be going off corridor where you're going to be in a lot of brush, then I might recommend a higher, more robust gaiter. But if it were me, I would just wear pants because I'm going to bring them anyway. Lastly, a great nice to have is camp shoes. I use Crocs because I prefer to have a closed toed shoe. There are scorpions, there are snakes, there are spiders, there are red ants, there is rock. Treating your feet is the most important thing you can ever do while you backpack. Obviously, you'll need your standard sleep system. This is mostly up to personal preference. Whatever you like works great. I typically bring a sleeping quilt, a sleeping pad, and my tent. I just like having the confines of a tent at night, but cowboy camping is definitely an option and something a lot of Grand Canyon backpackers do. However, you may have some scurrying critters across your bag at night, you've been warned. If there's a zero chance of rain, I'll leave my rain fly at home and still get to enjoy the stars even in a tent. Even those of us who have a, an extremely high tolerance to heat are gonna need to protect themselves from the sun. Number one, have a sun shirt. If you're not going into the Grand Canyon with this, even as a day hiker, simply put, you're a moron. <laughs> Do not plan on wearing a tank top or a t-shirt. My Outdoor Research Astro Man hoodie, I actually have several of these and I will literally just live in this and enjoy the funk. Another key item is a lightweight sun umbrella. This Six Moon Designs umbrella weighs next to nothing and with a few bungees can easily attach to your pack for hands-free hiking. Now for my next trick, shade. Busting out my sun umbrella. And this can take the temperature down by 10 degrees around you. Don't forget other standard sun protection items, your sunglasses, a hat, and sunscreen. Here's a quick tip. Pack a sunscreen stick instead of liquid sunscreen to save on space and weight. Now let's talk about water. Here's where that little baggie comes in handy. It's no surprise that water is a precious resource in the Grand Canyon. If you're on the main corridor, there are treated water lines. This makes water management a breeze. But if you're not on those trails, you're gonna need a plan. And the number one thing to keep in mind while you're making your plan is that the Colorado River as a water source is really silty. And I mean, silty. In fact, there's only one water filter I bring with me into the canyon, and that's my Platypus Gravity Works filter. Sawyer filters and even my favorite Mighty Be Free filter cannot handle the silt of the Colorado, especially if it's really poor quality. They will clog. However, the Platypus is a total workhorse and generally gets rid of everything I throw in its way. Which brings me to the infamous little white baggie. That's alum powder. In some cases, the Colorado is just too muddy for even the mighty platypus, so always take a backup. Alum powder is a food preservative, and in small quantities, it's gonna settle the silt in a water in about an hour. Put in too much, and your water will be really bitter and nasty. This, combined with an ultra-lightweight Sea to Summit 10-liter collapsible bucket, can literally save your butt. P&G also makes a product that will settle the sediment and purify your water. Either one is fine in the canyon. See the show notes for details. Oftentimes, your itinerary is going to include a water haul. Having the ability to haul up to 10 liters of water isn't a bad idea. It's not uncommon to drink four liters of water per day, plus some extra for camp. Smart water bottles, soft bladders, and the clean bag from the platypus gravity filter can make quick work of large hauls. Let's talk about food, because that's literally my favorite subject. You do not need bear cans out here. These are odor-proof stuff sacks. I will give a link to all of my favorite products that I use to backpack in the Grand Canyon in the pinned comment. This 
is a rat sack. This is a 20 liter rat sack. It has a chain mail mesh to it. This is a great lightweight way to protect yourself from the many different species of mice that are in the Grand Canyon and are notorious for grabbing your food. The critters can be so bad that on the rim to rim corridor, they actually have food lockers at the campgrounds. So you don't need one of these if you're on the rim to rim corridor. However, if you're venturing off corridor, particularly if you're at a beach camp, those camps seem to be rodent HQs, then you're definitely gonna wanna have these. I will hang this off of a tent guy line. Stove, fuel, all that stuff, super duper standard, all right here. I've also got a little cup in here for coffee along with everything I need to cook. And I personally love my MSR Pocket Rocket. This is another nice to have. Now I know everybody rant and raves about their little sit pads that are about yay big and you can just scoochie on down and pop a little squat. However, in the Grand Canyon, you're gonna regret having that. Having something that is at least half length is going to be so much better for you. If you're backpacking in the winter, chances are you're going to be waking up at the butt crack of dawn so that you can get your backpack on, hike for several miles until about mid morning, and then you are gonna stop under a barren, dusty shade rock for the day. Chances are you'll also be sharing that overhang with a few spiders. And if you have a little sit pad, you're not gonna really be that comfortable for six to eight hours. However, with a full-size Firmer SD light, you can take a nap and it's quite lovely. Having one of these is great because you can fold it over all kinds of rocks and stuff and make a little makeshift bed. Now, if you're on the rim to rim corridor, chances are this isn't necessarily what you would want. You can definitely bring your little sit pad. They've built shaded benches along most of the sections of trail there. Now you know what to pack, but do you know the secrets to successfully backpacking in the Grand Canyon? My next video dives into all the things you wanna know before you head out into the big ditch.